right, guys, welcome back. Another week, another wild, wacky opportunity to discuss wow. movies with Ooh. my wins. Wins. I'm Michael Swaim. Oof. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just... That's Abe Epperson. I don't I was, like you anymore. I was nodding to try... That's Abe Epperson. Oh, Jesus. Joining us today, very graciously, David Christopher Bell. Welcome, David. Hey, Woo. everybody. DB. How are you guys doing? We're good, man. At the yeah. DB. Uh, why don't you unveil what was your pick today? So what are we talking about? Oh, I guess it was my pick, right? Yeah. Uh, Cabin in the Woods. Woo! Yeah. 2012. 2012. Made in like 2009 or eight. Represent. I am going to do a super hot take immediately. I think it's Joss Whedon's masterpiece. I agree. Ooh. I'll, yeah, I'll third that. I'm yeah. thirding it. Certainly stands up better than the Avengers. Yeah. I think we all mentioned we watched it hoping it stood up because I had only seen it the once in theaters. And I was like, that was a cool little ditty. It seemed really good. And I watched it again being like, I hope this holds up. And it does. Yeah, I was. I <laughs> was very afraid the meta aspect wasn't going to hold up. The and script is airtight. Yeah, yeah. It reminds me of uh, Die Hard, as we said before the recording. Or like one of those scripts where you can zoom in on any line and every individual line. If you want, you can unpack and decipher why the line is that line versus any other line. There's a reason. It's like watching Get Out the second time and realizing, oh, well, I got it was a metaphor, but I didn't realize every line and every prop is obsessively a reference or joke right, right. on the theme. And this is exactly like that. Like it's a, it's a meta look at horror movies themselves and God, it's rewarding to scrutinize it through that lens. Every single choice was made with like a knowing wink of like, we're talking about movies, get it? Yeah. yeah. Remember that one movie? It's weird yeah. how. And that sounds tiring, but I do not find it tiring. Because no, it's a game. It's, it's a breezy 90 minutes. It's a fun enough game to fill 90 minutes. And I just find it a, like a delightful joy. Obviously, Firefly has highs. What's going on there? Is there a cat? There's a cat. Really? That can't cat be a cat. I see both my cats. A ghost just jiggled some plates. But moving on. Firefly had some more emotional highs for me, but it never ended and it doesn't have the tightness. This is like a work of elegance. <laughs> right. Yeah. This is a complete story. Mm -hmm. It is, man, not just the horror observation. I was finding that this movie, if you want to get weird and deep about it, it has a lot of uh, messages about authority and government as well. Yeah. Um, it, oh boy. And you could apply it to either <laughs> of the two main political parties in this country if you wanted to, which is, it's the idea of the, these, there's like three levels. There's the higher ups, the one percenters who are abusive and, and sacrificing the people on the bottom. And in between are the true believers, the, um, the gas station attendant that, that they're, the higher ups are laughing at. And it's the idea of like, um, this is this dogma. It's always been done this way. We screw this, this amount of people in order for the greater good. And of mm. course, it's the question of, is that ethical? Is that something that's worth doing or not? Right. Humans course, will do so much to perpetuate the human species. Is there a point at which the things you have to do are so unsavory that you should have just scrapped the project? Right. <laughs> yeah. And it takes the stoner guy to... Uh, the fool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To uh, see the truth and no one will listen to him. Yeah. And again, it's it's. Uh, I don't quite believe in that aspect. It, but I love the idea that it's like this hippie who's just like, oh, I'm going to free, saying, free like, this world, You man. guys need to tune in, yeah. drop out, smoke some dope, and open your eyes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> beep, I, beep, beep. I think it's right. definitely much more obsessively focused on film commentary. Yes, I would agree with that. Um, including the point that, so just the gist for people who haven't seen it and don't care about spoilers, this is the time to skip ahead one minute. If you're somehow listening to this and no, don't want to know, we're going to spoil it the whole time. Yeah, that's true the whole time. But right now I'm going to give just the nutshell thing of that to prevent demon gods from rising and destroying the earth. We have to comport every year, five sacrificial people to the roles that are preordained and they are the fool, the athlete, the whore, the virgin, and I owe it. What is the, the scholar? The scholar. Okay. Uh, and obviously, that's the double there is just in American horror subgenres. Those are the archetypes in American horror movies. Yeah. Right. Um, and then I love that 
Although, again, it creates so many plot holes that I don't know where to begin. But the conceit that all over the world, every country, or at least many countries, do this every year at the same time in a coordinated effort. But, like, we see the Japanese schoolgirls beat the ghost, but clearly the Japanese schoolgirls are not comporting to scholar, virgin, whore. I hope one of those schoolgirls is right. not. I had the same observation. I literally so, wrote it down. Uh, and I That's think, weird. Well, it yeah. totally makes sense because... Japan, the reason, it's got to be the reason they say Japan is the other great country versus America yeah. is because Japan is an, a huge pioneer in horror, right? Right. Um, and in a different type of horror. So I guess my question is, if we could see this whole movie from the Japanese point of view, what are their archetypes? Does their basement have 25 of those like stone pedestals for well, each schoolgirl? It would direct, definitely- Sigourney Weaver says that it's the same five. She says All each country, co- regardless of culture. So that's weird to me because right. metaphorically, I do feel like Japanese horror, and I want to shout out a bunch before the end of this podcast, if you haven't gotten into it. Have their own tropes. Japanese horror has its own separate whole set of horror tropes, right. and that's what makes them so fascinating and different from, like, there's never going to be Halloween or Friday the 13th. They have different shit that is traditional in their shit. There's like the little kid getting possessed or getting yeah. tormented by usually another little kid ghost or they love, they love kid ghosts. They love kid ghosts yeah. and they love gross out horror of a different kind. We tend to do torture porn where it's like, how painful would that be? They do stuff where it's like, oh, she made him eat a bowl of his own vomit. <laughs> like, <laughs> I find that they lean more into disturbing stuff, and I can be in the mood for that. There's times where I really appreciate that. Yeah, they also have a fascination with like losing face publicly. Like, there's a lot of movies. Humiliation. Yeah, yeah. yeah like Happiness of Catacuries. I think I'm saying that right. Old boy, the twist at the end involves like, whoa, you did all this just because he slighted you in public? That's right, really yeah, what it comes down yeah. to. Yeah. And there, there's a lot like a family is seen like uh, your business is going to fail now because there's zombies is like <laughs> the, the problem. Uh, granted, that's a comedy, but like it's playing with that trope too. Yeah, it's true that there's different. But I think like there there's one, there are a few overarching ones like Loss of Innocence. That seems to be a pretty big one. Oh yeah, for most horrors and more. Well, sure. I mean, I, I would certainly agree most that international female roles in horror are relegated to the virgin or the whore. That's true. But that's something this movie tries to undermine. Mm-hmm. Obviously, they make a big point of saying the people are not really like this because real people are complex. Right. They are forced into this mold. Just like a movie is not real life, it is you know a weird distillation right. of aspects we decided to exaggerate. Yeah. But the point being, I still think it's weird that they're saying, look, for thousands and thousands of years, the female roles are the virgin and the whore, and they always will be. (laughs) Really? Is is that true? It is very weird to me because, yeah, in a lot of Japanese horror, there's also like, it's sort of neither of that. There's always like the, like, I want to say the grudge, shudder. There's always, they're always vengeful. Like a lot of the female characters. And often the... The human female character, and they have a lot of female protagonists in Japanese horror, yeah. are super capable and smart. They're the plucky yeah. protagonist who you're ultimately going to watch get slowly tortured to death. I wanna, <laughs> yeah, I want to say I think in Sh- uh, Shudder, um, like she, I think it's Shudder, um, she like sides with the ghost at the end, like because the go- oh. the guy, the guy's like a dick, was like a dick to this mm-hmm. this girl, and like at the end she's like, oh yeah, no, fuck you, like that sucks, like it's it's a uh, I don't know. It's it's hard to find character archetypes in Japanese horror as much for me. I think it's more... Yes, I, they have imagery that I think is culturally... Yeah. I'm just saying you can tell. You can feel that it has a different vibe, cultural vibe. But it is broader. It's more expansive. American horror is very, is even more specific. Right. Um, but I just think it's funny that like those stone plinths were clearly, well, the athletes a dude and the whore is a woman. Mm. I'm like, what about a hundred years from now? If you're still doing this, couldn't a dude be the whore? Like I yeah. know dudes who are whores. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. What yeah. were we talking about? Well, the overarching kind of, uh, like why the the big hand at the end? They right. argue that the that's Kronos' hand. You're right. I know there was um, so I there's was Greek gods. Watching a Q and A where someone asked like why didn't it have tentacles? Why wasn't it a big monster? And he right. wanted this feeling of like an old world god um, coming, which which to, is classic like 
that com- vibes really well with the Titans story, the Titans. basically. Yeah, 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 exactly. yeah. So the gods of Olympus locked the Titans away, and they're an even older set of gods that are somehow primal or wild. Yeah. Come from beneath us. I want to know. See, we talk sometimes about scenes we'd like to see, or like, I want to know how they were ever convinced to give up the world in the first place. Like, what is the leverage humans have over them to even agree to this ritual? Well, I thought, I thought that that's just the rub. That's just what's going to happen regardless. It's like the physics because, of the universe. Because, yeah, as Dana says at the end, time to give someone else a chance. I mean, yeah. they're going to create some new human, and they're going to sacrifice them, but we're done. Oh, yeah. you're... See, that's, I think that's pretty presumptuous of her to assume that she knows how the cycle works. What if they just come back and that's the end of that? They rule now. Yeah. Yeah. Forever. I think with the assumption, because they, yeah, you're right. It is the assumption she's making, but I guess she's inferring it mm-hmm. from Sigourney Weaver's lines, which I don't think is too far-fetched, which is that sh- everyone is, everyone on the planet is dead at the end of the movie. Right. For sure. Which is pretty good for Every a human, at least. Like at least we can assume what I... I also want to know is how are they communicating with us? How do how does Sigourney Weaver know all this? Is yeah. she getting emails? Is and is up like st- when they they sometimes reference downstairs, You're right? And you can infer pretty heavily, I think, that that means the demon gods communicating. What do they call you and be yeah. like? We have new, we desire macaroni pictures. <laughs> yeah. And they also reference upstairs. Because this is the main thing I caught this time, and I really want to know how you guys interpreted it. Up and down. They say the tunnel didn't collapse because a a call came in from upstairs and rerouted the power. That implied to me something that didn't occur to me all the first time through, that either Sigourney Weaver or whoever's the top management of the human side... Or do they mean literally heaven? Like maybe an angel or a heaven god? I think that's a good catch, yeah. Intervened because it's time for humans to go, and it's like Noah's Ark. They decided this is the one where we throw in the towel. Because I that line slipped right by me, and I'm like, that has crazy implications. That he says, who? why didn't the tunnel collapse? Someone from upstairs called and told us not to collapse it. That bears a lot of unpacking. Right, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good catch. Watching I, it this I, time, that really confused me, because... They don't need that in the movie. And it the doesn't seem like Sigourney thing. would do that because that's right. not her agenda. It made me think, oh, God, like the Christian God, is choosing to l- end it this time, maybe. I just saw it as... Not the uh, Christian God, but the upstairs God. <laughs> because going back to us talking about how every other line is like pretty airtight and closed system, and that is an open system, I think it's a nice catch. I think its implications are kind of cool, but I don't think it's that intentional. I think it's probably easier just to read it as a uh, human error foresight of, sure. you know, something like someone screwed up, someone screwed up. I'd also because thought- they're shown that as that ha- that's a common occurrence. They're drinking, they're you know gambling. They're way- they they have way too much confidence in themselves to make this work. And that is one of the downfalls, that hubris is one of the downfalls. Well, there's seven sequences in the office, and in sequence, they enact each deadly sin in the office scenes. Did you notice that? Yeah. If if you have the vices up, right, they do lust forth or whatever, is a scene where a guy's hitting on the female coworker and she's uncomfortable. (laughs) So, like, yeah, they are the sinners who are... Think they're protected because they do what the book says, but they're not actually but pure. They're, so they have to they're be cleansed. the ones who did, yeah, exactly. And they, they really do like they get I, purged. I actually. think of the the scene, and the, yeah, and there's a they, purge reference very clearly. Yeah, yeah. System yeah. purge. The boxes, yeah. yeah. When they first come out of the box and they're in that hallway, like my first thought was like, why is that empty? And then I realized the party, like everybody's at mm-hmm. that stupid party. It's perfect. Like that's. I fucking love that they embrace the trope. Drag Me to Hell also brought it back. They're like, I love those old horror movies where the title card would scream at you and be huge. (laughs) This is the best deployment of that possible. Oh, yeah. Where it's a low stakes, boring shot between two guys bantering. And he goes, I'm sorry, what'd you say? Get in the world. (laughs) Fucking sets everything up about what the movie is doing. It is that maneuver is like deconstructing deconstruction. Oh, yeah. I loved it. Yeah, because this was um, a little, I think it was shot bef- before it came out, but this was right when Insidious was coming out, and that's another movie that does that. It screams that does the, the screaming title. title card. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's, I actually wanted to mention something, uh, because we did this on the last Jedi podcast, of like, and I, I fig- I'm preempting people calling us out on it, because there's an identical, somewhat are you an identical 
game that's played, which we kind of poo pooed on like the Poe Cameron calm bit at the start of that movie. But there's also with Mordecai, am I on speakerphone? Uh, and I thought I, that was one of the weaker jokes, I would say. I, it's not the best joke, but I I would argue that it's a great version of a deconstruction versus The Last Jedi. And why I'd say that, or why it works for me, is that the person who thinks that they have high status breaks down learning that they have low status. Right. So in Star Wars, it's just this kind of two high status characters, Poe, and you know uh, Hitler Weasley or both whatever. refusing to lose any status, being yeah, like, just no, being I'm bravado. Forceful. Well, I'm charming. You can't ruffle me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then and the same thing's happening here, but it's the subtle difference between someone finding out on their own, as opposed to someone spoon feeding them and just being mean and bullying them. Yes, Mordecai is just like, I hate it when you do that. Take me seriously, as opposed to. If they were just like, hey, uh, hey you're dumb, you know, yeah. like yeah. it's well rolodexed, it's on theme. I agree with you; it's very illuminating, much better handled. Right, I just What's, didn't make me laugh out loud. I well, was like, it wasn't the funniest. It joke wasn't the, in the funniest. Thing. Yeah. What's interesting about that scene is I was uh, reading about the commentary. Apparently, that's the first scene they wrote, and to them, that scene encapsulates the entire film. I think so. It clearly, it's, it's a the clearest like. Th- Get it? Deconstruction yeah. of horror tropes yeah. with a comedy angle. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's the entire company's arc uh, and a but horror genre in general. The reason it's such a masterpiece and so seamless is because it's so on point all the time. I totally get that that's the first scene, but every scene does that because oh, yeah. they, they never dance. falter from doing what their job that they yeah. came to they, do. Yeah, they, 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 they know their low status. They know what they are. They dance at the death of the teens. They take bets. They poke fun at each other. Um, you know, like they have that scene where all the men are watching as Jules and Chris Hemsworth are going to bone. And then it's just like, doesn't work on the first try and they usher them out, you know, like it's, and that obviously is one of the, the lust scenes. It's, it's like, uh, they are like, as you pointed out, they are the sinful ones. And they, yeah. they, as it progresses, they start doing more and more and more stereotypical to the point of, you can start naming the horror movies, the sequences from, right. Oh yeah. Um, things that no one would ever do. Like they're all in their early twenties and they're, uh, partying. I don't know about you guys, but I had long since outgrown playing truth or dare and telling my <laughs> friends to make out in front of each other. Yeah. It's not like it's awkward and it feels awkward when she makes out the, with the wolf. You're like, this isn't, sexy this is just weird it's and you're painfully aware that and it's everyone thinks something. it's weird yeah. you're also like this is totally a horror movie thing because it's something a horror movie writer would put in that no human would ever really do and then it immediately cuts to the revelation that they aren't real humans they're being controlled with hair dye the pot is laced the gas they put in pheromones yeah. so it's the you <clears throat> then you i just love they basically keep rubbing your face in what makes horror genres cheesy and then, what if we had to explain in a believable way why that's happening? My fear is the knife when she stabs him a bunch, and then they electrocute the knife. They zap it a little so she drops it. She drops it, yeah. So and she doesn't have it I was it like, how would that work? But then I was like, you know, if adrenaline was pounding, and you had just yeah. killed someone, and you dropped something, you probably wouldn't even think about it. You're like numb and in shock and stuff. That right. would work. <laughs> yeah. I love um, how all the, all the tropes that they derail in Act 1 alone are all like character archetypes as you're saying and bringing all of these people who have like already been proven to be kind of smart, uh, in the first sequences, like they're now lowest common denominator. I love that. Not even our main character, Dana is free from this. Uh, like you mentioned the wolf scene from that till the end of act one is like picture perfect to me. Like, I love it because right after it's finished by Dana, then like an evil dead reference the yeah definitely yeah. The, the cellar door the cellar yeah. door and then it cuts to dana going down the basement and you we jumped in time because there's obviously a conversation because her first line as she's going down there asks the question how long do i have to stay down here which I didn't catch the first time, but that means that there was some dumb conversation just like, like in every... Like it was probably a like, dare. You yeah. should probably just go down there. Yeah, I and dare you, go down. Which, we'll who on. would do that when confronted with 
a demonic right. like, door. <laughs> yeah. Like they're complete. Hemsworth arrives as they all come down then because she kind of is freaking out. And he arrives and he cracks a joke about her taking her top off. So there's no method to the madness at this no, point. They're yet, no longer their own character. But there's totally yeah. method. Right. Because they what they establish They're in the first part heart, very heart. well yeah. is that the characters are more complex than their archetype. So they very intentionally. Hemsworth is the star quarterback of the football team. And we see that he really is that. He also speaks very eruditely on like Russian economic sanctions and shit. Right, right. Yeah. Then the stoner is classic stereotypical stoner. He has a fake kind of bong and government conspiracy theories. Then when they're dealing with Mordecai, he's brave and steps up for his friend, which is right. like the last thing Shaggy from he's Scooby-Doo not, would do. Yeah, exactly. and that keeps Everyone happening. gets one moment before the gas kicks in yeah. where they're the opposite of their archetype. Then the gas kicks in and they're notably like, well, now you're leaning into your archetype. <laughs> what happened? Like, And that's the first time you watch it when you don't know the twist. It's so great because you start to think like the writing got lazy. I started to think, oh, this movie is just mediocre. Right. And then when the twist happens, you go, I see what you're doing. I'm back on board. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry I questioned you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it just I love the hallucinogen thing because well, it's just like it shows that all these like Friday the 13th, yes. Evil Dead, all these old things like – they're now riffs on the silly, like idiosyncrasies of right. like the horror genre, not of real people. Well, Bradley Whitford and Richard Jenkins is like the perfect team. Yeah. That's some oh, of the best so casting good. I've ever seen for this type of thing. Uh, I have to call bullshit on two aspects of the mind control gas or ask if there's an explanation. They complain. They keep telling the chemical department spearheaded by the only female employee there right. i guess mm -hmm. why can't chemical do their job right it was chemicals fault last time then at a very key moment where he needs thorazine pumped in he has to call down to chemical and say like you guys got to get the thorazine stat and the guy's like whoa, whoa, whoa hold on it'll all work out but my point is all the other times he goes watch the master work yeah and he pumps any gas he wants anywhere he presses a button that's always what's weird, the chemical the department for I think it's to make it so that he can press a button and something happens. Then why does he have to call to pump the Thorazine? Because in? the button isn't working. I right. think it's the same with the demolition. Like it was weird that it was its own little department. And he couldn't just press right. a button and right. blow that up. Right. If he's the if he's the maestro of this Truman Show, doesn't right. he just have the buttons? And then the other thing, I will buy a lot of things gas and chemicals can do, but you have a gas that makes people think they should split up right. to cover more <laughs> ground. That's such a specific gas. I assumed it was That's just like something him. Batman would have in the 60s. I assumed it was just making him dumber um, or something, but really no, quickly. No, but on a dime, his <laughs> right. initial we idea is up. we need to split up Wait. to cover more ground. And the other guy pointedly inhales the gas after him and goes, that is a good idea. Yeah, you're and the right. stoner doesn't inhale it and goes, what? Why is that a <laughs> so good idea? So that gas makes you think specifically that you should split up to cover more ground. <laughs> yeah. That's just a good gas <laughs> yeah, to have. Yeah. Just affects that one part of your brain that wants to split up right. all the time. The only excuse I could think of is if it just makes you feel whatever that you're wrong, like right. makes you feel doubt in whatever you're currently doing. If they, it's like a reverse course gas. <laughs> right. I loved those details, but I, I will say I didn't think. I mean, I know why they exist in this movie, but like one thing I always thought about is people talk about how characters are so dumb in horror movies. But I I always think about that idea that they don't know they're in horror movies. Like I've had moments in my life where it's occurred to me, like, oh man, if I was in a horror movie right now, I would have just done done a really stupid thing. Like but, that idea of breaking off from the group and being like, I'm gonna go take a leak in the woods. But like a sane person, like you really would, even if you're in a horror, you're assuming monsters don't exist. Exactly. Right? Yeah. <laughs> they're not dumb for thinking that at the beginning of the movie. No. I always think that too. That's like the ultimate defense against that. Yeah. They don't know. They don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're in. Dummies. Don't assume <laughs> that there's a zombie redneck torture family. <laughs> yeah. What are they? The Buckners? The Buckners. Yeah. Patience Buckner. Oh, I love great. uh I always like it on this podcast when there's a an like analogy or a uh, they do a nod a plant and payoff that is here's the whole story that you're about to be told, but here it is in like dressed up so that you could never actually think that. Uh, and they do it in this movie with uh, Dana reading from the book, the family book, uh, Patience, the young girl, uh, who is also obviously a yeah. symbol of being the virgin, uh, is reacting about how her siblings 
are being locked away and murdered, and she laments that her arm is being eaten <laughs> by, and her, stuff dad, like, by her dad. And her dad yeah. gets an erection when he tortures his kids. Uh, yeah, yeah. Husband husband bulge. Bulge. yeah. Uh, it's a parable about how Dana herself will like witness all of her friends die oh, by her like oh, parental great. captors. Interesting. And also, there's so many nods to Patience is the last zombie alive, also, just yeah, like she's the last human al- alive. Yeah. And she, uh, there's, I don't know if it's intentional. But uh, I think it is because there's just too many times she loses her flesh or the flesh returns as she decides to forsake the world and the kind of rebirth. That's like one of the Latin Ooh. phrases, Dana, because oh. uh-huh. she makes the decision to rebirth. And that's something that uh, Patience talks about is like, even though I lost my flesh, like it. Dad says that I'll get my flesh back when I, you know, we're in what way born. does Dana do that <clears throat> by climbing out of the lake? No, What's by the uh, for that? I think that's the end of the movie. I think that's the rebirth of humanity. Oh, I guess like in my mind. Oh, but it works because she's a zombie. Yeah. I was like, rebirth doesn't usually involve you dying, but you're saying it does when you're a zombie. When you're undead. <laughs> uh, but uh, something I don't know if it's unintentional is uh, Dana jumps through the one way mirror, which already kind of is a symbol of their ser- shared sexual tension. Like, so and when the zombies yeah. arrive. Uh, Kurt like breaks the window yeah. in between them to get her out of that room and she cuts her left arm which is the same arm Patience, had eaten. Patience has yeah. eaten oh shit and also later in the sacrificial chamber chamber, uh, Dana's bit on the left arm by the werewolf yeah oh. so it's always her left arm that's getting I'm mint. sorry I shot you I'm sorry I got let you get bitten by the a werewolf, werewolf and then ended the world. Yeah. <laughs> Good line. Good line. Very just, weed in line. Totally yeah. me reading into the symbolism of it. I don't know if it's intentional. Speaking of that mirror, just hey, a, why hide a two way mirror that's so easy to find? That's like such an obvious clue to the fact that they're in a fabricated universe when you don't want them to know that. And right. B, why did the dude, the scholar dude, uh, just start taking off all his clothes. Yes, he goes. Oh my gosh! For decency's sake, stop undressing, lady in the other room. I can see you. We should switch rooms now. Knowing that we're in the same rooms, but in reverse order, I'm going to immediately get fully naked. I thought he was like flirting in a really aggressive way of just uh, being like, "Oh yeah, aggressive. yeah." Like, what the fuck is that supposed to mean? Yeah, yeah. Just, and it's weird that she acts embarrassed and like covered it up. She <clears> should be like, "Dude." I'm right here. Like, Did you not I, forget yeah. why we knock, just switched knock, rooms? Knock. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> still, still looking at it. I just assumed it was a gas. Yeah. I love that. Uh, uh, you can always, it's like magic. Yeah. A uh, gas made them do it. <laughs> they turn on the pheromones <clears throat> and they like super want a bone, but I don't know. I love that the fool uh, stoner dude, his, the item he was going to pick in the cellar, if it had been his item, was a film strip. And right. he is the one who's able to see that this is a movie. Yeah. Like he's the one it's who like can step puppeteers. outside. He was interested in it as a film. Yeah. Also. Uh, so. And of course the Hellraiser puzzle box. Is as good. you pointed out. Yeah. I love that character, by the way, how she's like screaming at him. And he's just looking. Silent. Yeah. Uh, Marty, which is the, the druggy guy. Um, Obviously, as you oh, mentioned, I thought his name was Barney the whole time. I thought it was Marty. <laughs> it probably it is. is Marty. Okay. Yeah. Pot saves him. We mentioned this. But when he saves Dana with the at the pier, like he's supposed to be dead, he uses the bong cup. Yep. Right, right. Which uh, pot saves pot, him. Pot, Cause pot saves is saves day, salvation. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Just wanted to point out just a little factoid that I read online: the thermal coffee mug bong that mm-hmm. I'm talking about yeah. is actually a fully functional mug and bong. Yeah, it, I've seen uh, that product before. And nice. they built it for the film. Yeah. And the oh. prototype took five thousand dollars. Wow. But they exist now. Yeah, uh, probably because the they movie. probably patented it. Yeah, you can get you can buy that at, at fancy bong shops now. That's all. That is a great to know that Joss Whedon or someone on the team thought of that though. That would it's like yeah, it would. You could design <laughs> bongs for a living. I like people to, want that. <laughs> I like to think that yeah, if you buy one now, it goes straight to Joss Whedon. Like he right. just, the mm-hmm. money he's running all, it. Yeah, all this bong bongs. cup money. <laughs> um, question though about that when. A person dies in the ritual. We are led to believe that it is a blood sacrifice and the blood is literally gathered in those pools, right? I think they have the blood before because like that's what I'm Chris trying to Hemsworth figure out. Chris Hemsworth falls off a bike. I was right. watching a Q&A and someone asked that exact question what, to Joss Wheaton. Do you know how do they, they get they the blood? They sort of shrugged <laughs> it off. Um, I don't think there's a good yeah, answer. Yeah, it's not, it's not their blood. 
Um, they 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 joked about this like. Uh, like why would they have a freaking purge section for all those monsters? Right. Like why a would they need that? System purge is With the a worst. Big idea. red button. Like there's just oh, some yeah. silly why stuff. Why would in there be a button that opens all the yeah. monster cages simultaneously? And why would that button exist? That's some Matt Lauer shit. Yeah. Where you're right. like, we're not installing that. And may- maybe if the, in the director's <laughs> office under lock and key, but not. Well, this is why I want to know what the instructions are of the the monsters. Like were they like like. You have to sacrifice these people um, and pour their blood in. Well, it doesn't have to be their blood. It just has That's to be some That's what I'm blood. getting at. Yeah. It clearly like, wasn't their blood because it couldn't be gathered. Yeah. And because when he, when he, when they think Marty's dead, they pull the lever and the blood goes. And it obviously can't be Marty's blood because he didn't actually Yeah, he just got stabbed. And they get a call from downstairs and go, what do you mean he's not dead? I, saw, I yeah. thought he was. So it's just... Some blood. It's a symbolic visual thing. But yeah. what's funny is if it's just symbolic and they just really want the souls of these kids, why does the demon god need blood in a bowl? Like also, or you just buy that that's what he wants. Well, that's the rules. That's <laughs> well, maybe the, for the humans. At the very end, she just has to shoot Marty, and apparently that will appease them. They're not going to crack that thing. They're not going to do the blood the blood ceremony then everybody's dead like so apparently guess, that might not even be necessary some of the people who died their blood couldn't feasibly be gathered easily yeah. <laughs> i also love the idea that these gods like at this point have blue balls or something because they're just like they yeah. just now they're like yeah the horror i love how that i love how everyone died all right well chris hemsworth is not gonna die via like torture family he's just gonna run into a wall that they'll works. do, yeah. they'll do. And for the last one, just uh, just, shoot just shoot him. Well, yeah. this goes when into they literally a... said, "Well, the main thing is it has to be their free will. Right? They cannot just walk in with Uzis and shoot them. Yet at the end, they're like, save the world. Everyone walk in with Uzis and, and shoot, shoot them. them. So clearly, they think that could work. Yeah. And then, well, uh, go ahead, go ahead. I was just gonna say it, it goes back to what I say about this uh, symbolizing like dogma and authority. It's that they take shortcuts. It's just boiling it down to okay, like here's what we technically need to do in yes. order to achieve this. It's definitely a bureaucracy, right? <laughs> yeah. Which makes me wonder several things, not the least of which is this has happened every year for time immemorial, and we've always succeeded. In the year 1500 BC. No mind control gas, no centralized government. How were they pulling this off? Well, they have a and few lines. And it worked lines. every year. They yeah. have a few lines where they say, like, remember where you could just throw someone in a volcano? But that or, can't like, be sacrifice. true because that's not free will if you just grab someone and throw them in a volcano. I think that's the idea behind those lines were that their tastes have changed. That the, the gods themselves Then that are implies more... that the gods update them with new information. And then I'm back to David's point, like, do they Skype with the gods? They what must. Happens? They yeah. gotta have, like, a demon who, like, liaises. I mean, they have their red phone, and they pick it up, and they get information from downstairs. But I'm like, what does that feel like? Does he just put the phone to his ear and see visions, you know? Oh, I thought the, I thought the red phone was Sigourney Weaver. I did, yeah, I, I, didn't, th- I thought it was. I, didn't, oh, I, I maybe thought that is. that was like human side. Maybe it is, but there's also points where they say we got the guy downstairs wouldn't like it, and they're right. definitely referring they're to definitely if right. we fuck this up, the demon will escape. I thought it's just that they don't have any interface unless the gods want to interface. Yeah. I guess well, the, I don't the know. central thing that never coheses is to me that you just have to accept because it's fine yeah. is the thing of the different archetypes. Like... Japanese culture would should have a different set of archetypes. That's and yeah. if they don't, then what is the demon god who's sitting underneath Japan want? He wants American archetypes for no reason to be killed in America far away, or is there only one demon god only? And it can just appear. and it only cares that somewhere in some country, somewhere in the world, five kids died. That's what he wants. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. He, he's got reasonable standards. Yeah. Do horror movies exist in this universe, like the universe of mm. Cabin in the Woods? Do they ever reference horror movies? I thought this universe was saying that horror movies all exist in real life within this universe. Like I imagine yeah, because of this. Camp Crystal Lake is a scenario they ran in the 80s that was successful. Right. Yeah. <laughs> But then what about movies like The Shining and like movies that don't take place in a cabin in the woods or like, do they have other setups? Well, I definitely thought the fact that they said we have a high clearance rate, but Japan has the highest of all. Don't you think that's a meta joke about how American horror is dark, but 25% have happy endings, whereas Japanese horror, 99% have unhappy endings. Like 
almost no one survives a Japanese horror movie. This is ever. True. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I think it has something to do with, yeah, the clearance rate is like how good you are at killing yeah. people. So I guess The Shining would have been a year America failed and Japan saved our asses, right? Right. Because they yeah. say Japan's never but failed also, so in that, recorded history. <laughs> that would be a year that they were like, yeah, let's do it at this hotel, this weird random hotel. Or is um, it always the cabin in the woods? Do you, yeah, I don't think I was, there's a clear answer. Do you imagine they rebuild a new scenario? I mean, like how how... It's obviously well funded, but uh, that's a lot of like moving all those monsters right. to different areas. And they mentioned that the cellar is a standard thing that's in play every time. Right. right. Yeah. So this isn't. I don't think this is in that y- the universe where all horror movies necessarily exist. It's. Yeah. It's, <clears throat> I it's, wondered if the holding cell is a cube reference. It's neither here nor there, but all I could think of was cube. Have you seen there's those There's so ones? many yeah, references, good. though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can't go through all... It's like, yeah, every famous horror movie you like. Pretty much. There's a monster in it that's a sly reference to it. I do love that there's um, the entire story is actually a Buffy episode. Mm-hmm. It's uh, in the fourth season. There's this episode called Primeval, and a horde of demons are released from their cages in a government facility, end up killing the staff. Oh yeah, there oh, you that's go. That's great. Yeah. And even and Buffy had that whole through line with a government the agency Evil. underground oh, that yeah, has yeah. monsters locked up. Yeah. Yeah. Vampires locked up. But uh the mermaid payoff? Oh, God. oh the merman <laughs> thing. Oh, I love that. That was so apparently much. like the hardest shot of the movie to do yeah, because they, of the blood. They joked that the blood they, blow hole? Yeah. It was so the joke doesn't work without the topper of blood coming out the blowhole. Yeah, that's right. what made it. Oh, that's absolutely, what made it. I love his response though. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, come on. Man. I I also love the reference to. It's not as obvious to Evil Dead One and Two, uh, which is the teens try to escape in the RV, and they go through the tunnel. And oh then right. It's, it's blown and mm. closed yeah, up. It's, which is the same device as the bridge is out. Right, in yeah. the Evil Dead movies, totally. the bridge is turned into a weird claw. Like, yeah, I love, I love how, that. how the, yeah they don't try to make it even look realistically like something. No, it's right. an evil natural hand. happen. Yeah. No. <laughs> um, another Evil Dead reference, apparently, um, and I I didn't see it, but I was reading about it. Is that there's a tree that attacks someone in the part where the purge oh, yeah. happens oh and i they, didn't notice the oh tree. yeah and and they like argued over how how rapey the tree should be um, which is yeah yeah clearly. which is an evil death you can thing. find online we won't go through all of them because it's more it's better to just find a website and look at them yeah, there's like but it's obsessive. so many in jokes like there's reavers yeah a la joss whedon's firefly universe the um God, the behind the scenes of this, just from a creature effects perspective, it's like... Sounds like blast. Yeah, yeah, that's what they were saying. Well, it was brutal because it was a 10-person team and they had to expand. And they were sending everything up to Vancouver where they were shooting. Wow. And it was just this like grueling process. It wasn't It wasn't a long amount of time. But the from a writing perspective, it was just them sitting around thinking of like, what's, what's some sort of walking nightmare? It's the same... Yeah, it's like Rolodexing yeah. we did for sketches. Yeah. Like, this is our topic. Just everyone think. And then, I'm just saying that must have been, I'm sure it was grueling. Ten people sounds like not enough to do this movie. No. But so fun for every monster project to be totally separate and a different one. Instead of like, okay, let's build a thousand aliens for this giant scene. They're like, we got a wolf man. We yeah. got a hellraiser. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. We got everything. We got a ghost. The the Wolfman, by the way, this is my favorite behind the th- scenes thing I learned is Sigourney Weaver when they had her on set every day would ask when is the Wolfman coming. She was so excited wow. about the oh, wolf. That's great. I yeah. thought for a second you were saying that's Sigourney Weaver in the oh, costume. Oh, that would be for the wonderful. Day. Yeah. No, the, I love how she can't wait. Yeah, to she, see a wolf. She had, like there's pictures of her with the wolf, like all excited. Wolfman. It was like she apparently yeah. really wanted to see that. That's funny. Wolf. I love Just that. Just always yeah. wanted to meet a werewolf on set. Yeah. Why is, I understand why. It's because, as we said, they're Rolodexing movie tropes. If you show your boobs in the movie, you die. Right. So they are waiting for the girl to show her boobs. They make a point of saying, well, we are sexist pigs, but we're also hoping she shows her boobs because it will save the world. In France, for example, Mm -hmm. because she keeps her bottoms on, showing your boobs is not even taboo. Why? So like, I just I have a lot of questions for the demon god. What counts as a transgression? 
clearly sex. Okay, so sex is inherently evil. You're going with that whole puritanical vibe. That's fine. But just exposing your breasts? What a, why are you not hanging out on beaches in Europe, you know, scolding everyone? It, <laughs> it must have something scolding. to do with the culture. Like, they like the taboo mm. aspect. So it's not, it's not like set in stone. It's not just showing your breasts. It's showing your breasts in a society where that is seen as taboo. But they also say the archetypes are the same in every oh, so That's the yeah. inherent flaw. Because I'm like, so does this mean if the ritual is the same everywhere, the Japanese people were like, one of these schoolgirls has to show her breasts or we cannot get this thing done. Yeah. And I was right, like, then why did you stock it with schoolgirls? Right. Yeah. I'm trying to think of if the definitions of these archetypes are broad enough that they just, in different cultures, can mean different things. Like, they translate to different things in different parts of the world. I can world. see that they're primal, but you can also see how they're very much about Halloween, Friday the 13th, and that right, whole... Yeah. Like, those five archetypes come from that tradition. Yeah, the slasher film. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what they're getting at. We all know that. But uh, it is fun to think about. Uh, if you had to make it real, what would be wrong with it? Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Because I keep coming back to the fact that, like, the school children. Yeah. Like, one of them is just an athlete, I guess. And one of them's a whore. One of them's I a guess. whore, I guess. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, yeah. Just little girl, little boys. Maybe or. like when they grow up, they will fit those archetypes, uh, and they just n- yeah. But then why are there like twelve of them instead of five? Maybe maybe they don't know which ones would fit the archetypes, yes. so they're like, okay, just to have a a bigger sample size, just yeah, we get twelve kids, and one of them's bound to fit with that archetype. Well, that's we the other thing is that the the loss of innocence and like the teenager. That's a uniquely American thing, or at least we're. Mm-hmm. That's the ones that we like to make. And that the virgin death is optional is very American. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and I think, so a commentary it's on the, American the movies. Final maybe, girl, it's the, maybe this yeah. prime evil, maybe this Kronos guy. Or, though, yeah, it's always the whoever's perceived as frailest. Like in Cube, the mentally handicapped guy is going to survive because what are the odds? Right. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, I, maybe the gods are just like, well, we want, that's the five we want. But they're like, uh, yeah, we got this culture that's just willing to like knock off kids. Like, le- like, and they're like, we're not going to stop you. Yeah. And, yeah. and the prime evil's like, well, I'll be fine. Yeah, that's why I was asking fun. if horror movies exist, because what if they just have access to horror movies and they're like, oh, yeah, this is great. We'll just do this. Yeah. Like, like, we love this. Like, oh, the, like the they gods. told them, make yeah. one of those yeah. Hellraisers. Yeah, yeah I exactly. like that one. Yeah. Exactly. Like, they're just asking for knockoff horror villains and the, the government or whoever these people yeah. are is making it. Do they explain why the pot immunizes him to the brain control gas, Marty? No, they just say they it say does. that it does. Yeah, and okay, I wondered if I missed the line or if they're just like we don't know why there was something in the pot. Yeah, did he say something at the beginning like about this being a He's, special strain? It's or laced. Something? I think it's laced did. with yeah. something, yeah. and I guess we're just led, led to believe that it, coincidentally that right. blocks whatever receptors. Yeah, that's they chemicals, were on. chemicals. That's yeah, chemicals, chemicals. It's chemicals, just a thing. chemicals. Just these kids getting their medicines. Yep. Why the fuck would there be a button that unlocks all the cages? We talked about that. Because it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Again, I, I, you know what my explanation is, is that the, the gods who secretly want to, because here's the other thing is, won't, don't they want to get free? I don't, that's, yeah. My main thing is like, what is their agenda? What but do they like want? That in the, um, the freaking cave. Like, I like the idea that they're secretly sabotaging them, and they're like, oh, yeah, you got to have a purge button. Like, you you, right. you got to put that in, or else That's we'll get angry to it. Yeah. yeah, like, it, it's like maybe this is part of some bigger plan we're not Long seeing. Con, yeah. Right. How do they capture Who supplied the of, monsters? Where'd they come from? Yeah, yeah where they come from, and also, like, because they, uh, their big security team is just using bullets, and you have to assume that Either these horror monsters go, once they've completed their mission, return to their cube willingly, or have to be wrangled. they have to be wrangled up. Who and wrangles like, the ghost okay, with okay. bullets? Why wouldn't okay. they have yeah. unique weapons for, like, because a bullet does not work against the wraith. Right. Hold on. Um, I, I want to try this. Could there have been, like, maybe around the 80s, there was a group of guys starting to catch ghosts, and it got really popular. <laughs> And the government got involved, and they st- they're they're catching these ghosts for them, and putting them in little traps, and then uh-huh. bringing them to here, uh-huh. little cubes. Yeah, rectangles. what are you gonna call them? 
Oh man, good question. <laughs> but who are you but gonna like, call? Wraith it, breakers? Can it, can it exist in this universe? Can it be that this is the like because it could exist? But Zul and or sorry, Gozer and like the yeah. like uh, like is is that like the evil gods from Ghostbusters that we're keeping at bay by catching ghosts? And the underworld them is just yeah. spawns them. At Only one time. part I think doesn't vibe, which is that. They say very specifically they do this every year like clockwork at the same time and they've been doing it for thousands of years. Which right. Does, so, but like, that doesn't quite Ghostbusters work. couldn't have gotten in on the ground floor. Right. But if not for that one detail, it works perfectly. <laughs> yeah. Because you're right. I don't know. Gozer is an evil god. Yeah. yeah. But <clears throat> in Ghostbusters, it's just the gods of the netherworld. There are mermen, mm. and, you know, like, obviously there's a lot of undead. There's still the question of who provided initially in this facility like was the evil god like build some empty cubes you'll see why right and then one day he's like here are the monsters well is this just <laughs> yeah. like here's yeah. an here's the nightmares it's your starter or, kit you can buy expansions if you want is you it build years, cubes <laughs> yeah. yeah is it years of collecting these things and trapping them in these <laughs> objects and then they just put all the objects but that's in the what i'm getting at oh, is it's that not ghostbusters dude this is pokemon right. dystopian end game <laughs> That's what They've I that, caught them all. <laughs> that's what makes sense to me is that because they come from so many different myths, yeah. they had to be kind of lured in one at a time. That's the one that makes the most sense to me as opposed to just like a prison. But are they walking uh, the earth or do they all come from this hell dimension from below? I think both. I think they like come up to so it. So that yeah. implies even when this ritual is not in play, people in this universe could be walking in the woods and encounter a leprechaun. Yeah. I didn't. I think so. I didn't think that when I was watching well, it. Well, there's a few. It, the reason that I say this is I this. assumed these monsters in the cubes are the only supernatural things on Earth. See, that's, yes, that could be true. But I, I was, I'm making the argument because there was a few of the monsters that are clearly like, not like they're from other horror genres from modern day but they're not exactly like what we would call like the nightmare creatures from hell for example there's one that is just kevin and they talk yeah. about and they document that kevin is just a guy <laughs> who like is a best boy employee or best buy employee and he just when he goes home he murders people <laughs> right he's from one of those movies <laughs> where he's it's just, a normal guy he's a normal murder guy and they have uh, a future, uh, an advanced robotics, like an advanced robot right. with servo so arms. Bad. If it became evil, clearly that monster was added to the stable recently because yeah. the robots like didn't exist eight hundred like years Vi ago. Vikings, yeah. like oh, uh, I would love to see the Viking version of Bradley Whitford being like, "What am I supposed to do with this crazy robot?" Like, uh, I don't know Vikings vs. Is robots <laughs> is a movie I'm want to make so bad. Vikings versus robots versus aliens versus predators versus yeah. cowboys. Yeah. Greenlit. <laughs> Greenlit. You you get, you heard it here first. I'm, it's gonna happen. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Uh, but because of that, I think that they're lured in, which means that they need to have unique weapons for each of the <sighs> relative. Like what's what stops a Hellraiser versus what stops a right. Japanese ghost. mafia ghost family? I want to say this children is children singing versus solving a puzzle box. Right, <laughs> right exactly. <laughs> Which now means that they should have a big room of near all the cubes of like the weapon the that does it. Right, right. And so that so you shouldn't have a bunch of SWAT team members. You should have a series of enforcers who are probably knowledgeable about the monster. Very yeah. good at stopping each More of like them. More like zookeepers crossed yeah. with paladins. If <laughs> time and money is of no problem. Yeah. You employ one person who is like, I am the Hellraiser stopper. <gasps> I want to see a movie that is Muldoon from Jurassic Park gathering and delivering the monsters to the Hell cubes. Yeah. Yeah. Hell I like yeah. that because how Muldoon is all like spooky and, and, and ominous about the raptors. It would be that, but everybody's just agreeing with him. He's well, like, they should all be destroyed. See, I, think it's, like, yeah. I think it's better Absolutely. if they still dismiss it. And he's like, <laughs> the thing we hunt is a deadly wraith, timeless, immortal, can phase through solid matter and devours only souls. Be careful or you'll be dead. Ah, you worry too much. <laughs> It's just a wraith. <laughs> the other thing is that he's just Kevin. <laughs> <clears throat> it's just Kevin. We got to talk about. We Kevin. We need to talk about. We need to talk. Well, about here's Kevin. the other thing: is that we see that same wraith that uh, you know uh, Dana screams at. You're just uh, wraithist. Do you think all wraiths look alike? I I am a little wraithist. Um, 
it can phase through walls in yeah. like the office, but it can kitty that pride. glass stops it. I thought it was going to be like the um, house of a uh, or thirteen ghost glass or something where they're just like obviously spells on it. tempered well, glass. <laughs> it's I'm dragon glass. Yeah. I I'm wondering. See, that's why that's why I was going the Ghostbusters way because I'm wondering if the origin of this is that we got really good at catching creatures. So the gods were like, "What the hell? We're coming up there," and we're ah. like, "Oh, okay, okay. Look, we'll let we'll let them kill like a small amount of people, and you guys stay down there." So there used to be zombies everywhere, and now they're like, "You've diminished the zombie population so much, we're not getting any of that sweet blood trickling." Exactly, down. <laughs> and so we made a deal. Where we were like, "We'll give you uh, this amount." Totally. Were that true? That though, saves it. The system purge would not be as we would not be as ineffective. Yes. yes, you're right. We would have some recourse. I would I would then <laughs> yeah. yeah, see it's I was I was going to say I would then argue that we just got so lazy that we forgot how to deal with these creatures, but mm. the the robot means we've gotten something New recently. We got recent. Or like you said, the evil god is like and part of the deal is there's this big red button that fucks you if you press <laughs> it. Well, we'll just cover it up. You're not allowed to cover it up. Well, we'll uninstall it. You can't. That's part of the deal. Mm. I'm an evil god. Right. <laughs> what if this was like a contract and it was full of all these... Temptation like, has yeah. to be a part of it. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, that's fine. Oh, yeah. yeah. Deus sex. Yeah. Demona. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're significantly over time, which is fine. Oh, but, are we? Uh, yeah. I mean, we have no time limit. They've been about an hour and we're over an hour. But I just want to make sure I don't get to the end without shouting out some Japanese horror movies I know we'll never cover. Mm. Um, but before that, I don't want to cut anyone off. The floor is still open. Dave, you got some stuff? For Cabin in the Woods discussion. I see you. No, I notes. wanted to add a Japanese horror movie. Oh, great. You guys should cover House, right? Yeah. I haven't seen it, House but I've heard about House it. House okay. yeah. Is that Japanese or is that... Um, I mean, the uh, way South Abe Korean just offensively and, uh, said it, it sounds Japanese. Well, yeah. I do know that... Well, there's a, I, there's a trailer that... Says I Aosu. know. I'm sh- yeah, it's yeah. not racist to say Ringu because that's what it's called. I yeah, know. but <laughs> I it just saw it. That was the first one I saw. I don't know if it is Japanese though. I, th- I assume know. it is. Um, that movie is amazing. It's not. It's not like indicative of that culture, right? It's not like sure. oh, this is what their movies are like. It's like one lunatic who made a movie, right? Yeah. Right. Yes, and it's also I love how it is clearly the uh, f- for the the trailers in Planet Terror. Mm-hmm. And uh, don't the Edgar Wright yeah. one? Yeah, it's the great. clear, you know, yeah. like <laughs> don't, yeah. you know, like yeah. If you're thinking of going in the house, don't. don't. It is just like who's who's called? Who is this? It's the house, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, we should cover that. But there's ones that I know we probably won't cover. So I just want to see, like, Dave, if you've seen these. I feel like I know what you've seen and haven't seen, but feel free to play along. Mm. Like. Start with a softball, Ichi the Killer. Yeah. I actually haven't seen that. Okay. I actually would like to cover that. It's my yeah, favorite Takeshi Miike. That, I feel like, is one of those movies that I, I'm wrong for of not seeing, right? Like that's you, a, You'll that's like a it. It's interesting film. to see. It's, I'd love to watch it with you. That yeah. would be fun. Oh, yeah, yeah. We should do that. Um, and then, but people more have seen Audition, which is more, I don't want to say standard, but it's more straightforward. Ichi the Killer is really weird and disturbing, which is why I like it. Right. Audition is really horrifying but it's straightforward Ugh, horror. yeah that, I haven't seen that either okay. well, but I have it well um, Takeshi Miike is like is something that I don't think we're allowed to have in America mm-hmm. outside of David Lynch maybe which is a serious horror filmmaker like whether right, you think yeah. he succeeds or fails he's trying to horror is popular enough in Japan that you can be taken seriously as like the equivalent of an Oscar contender That's... with horror so they're very artistically lofty disgusting torture porn horror movies. Right. <laughs> I have I haven't seen it because I personally torture porn doesn't do anything for me in terms of horror movies. Me um, neither in general. It's but I'm saying he actually brings right. artistic sentiment which is what saves them. But that's what I like about this new kind of uh this new group of horror movies coming out uh, specifically from A24 that studio. Mm. I really like cuz you go back and look at the 70s and like yeah, horror movies used to be things that good directors did. Like yes. Richard Donner did The Omen. Like the, right. it, it used to be and the last time I can remember that is like um, What Lies Beneath Kubrick, with yeah. Zemeckis. Um, mm-hmm. And then, so yeah, I guess um, yeah. Scorsese recently did Shutter Island, which I would say is sort of a horror. But I miss that horror, horror being thriller. taken seriously yeah. as a as a artistic uh, uh, endeavor. Yeah, which, so it can be refreshing to delve into what's going on in Japan because they take it very seriously. Yeah. Um, have you seen Stacy's? No. 
I haven't seen Stasis. Great movie about zombies uh, fighting. You know, zombies exist. They're coming into existence. Ooh. People have to re-kill each other to stay dead. Like, you make a deal, you know, if I become a zombie, re-kill me. But it's just great because the resolution is they realize they can have sex with the zombies and produce zombie-human <laughs> hybrids that are no longer violent. So they capture the zombies and, and make sweet love to them. That's awesome. While romantic music plays and mm. the world is saved. Very weird movie. Uzumaki, where a woman starts slowly turning into a snail. Also very creepy. Holy shit. Like, you know, a Kafka, obviously, inspired thing. And then, uh, last but not least, I really like Suicide Club. Did you see that? No, I, ro- I want to see that one. That's just a ch- like Japanese schoolgirls start all holding hands and jumping in front of subways. Right, yeah. No one can figure out why or what's triggering it, and it's pretty horrifying. Yeah. Yeah. And Suicide. there's obviously Battle Royale. Right, of course. Which I yeah, haven't I've seen. seen that. That's one I haven't yeah, seen. That I know is that Battle a horror Royale? movie, Battle Royale? I would call it, I mean, it, like, feels, yeah. it now feels like there's a genre for that kind of thing, like a young adult. Right. Movies, but Where it's, the kids are allowed to get it's killed. It's yeah. definitely not in that genre of young adult. It just feels that way when you look at the structure because it's like the thematic problem. The thematic thing with Battle Royale is it's a bunch of teenagers who, because of the laws of society, have to be sacrificed. Yeah. And they're like, fuck the older generations. Right. We're going to break this all down. Yeah. So it's a it's not a horror movie in the sense of like supernatural or anything, but it is a very gory. Yeah. It's a hunger action. game set up. If it was taken yeah. seriously, basically. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like if the violence was as horrific and, as it would be, and, and the violence kill is each other. very well done. Yeah. Uh, I, and it's a pretty famous movie. I sort of lumped that in with old boy where it's like old, boy, I would say is almost horror like at times where like yeah. this same two movies where you sort of end and you just like stare at the screen wow. for a second yeah but it's mainly it's like a tense drama with horror tones all yeah, over it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah there's um and i gotta show it to you because i Old have a dvd great. there's um like in the same way that we had like the director series it was like michelle gondry and like chris yep. cunningham and, and the stuff Spike Jones uh one. there's uh there's asian cinema horror anthology called the three extremes the three extremes yeah those yeah. are great there's multiples of yeah. releases of them yeah yeah and there's like yeah there's multiple dvds but and my each favorite one has one, three shorts like by three different directors and stuff like that yeah. like 10 to 20 minute oh, that shorts that and one of them's takashi miike definitely a good way to ease into it if you're like scared of horror and you want to try yeah. it because mm-hmm. we're they're, recommending it but they're yeah. pretty brutal but awesome yeah, uh, and anyone out there looking for that kind of genre, definitely look into getting those DVDs. This movie is objectively really bad, but have you guys heard of Cemetery Man? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Have you seen it? I think I saw parts of it. Where you get? Okay. I don't think I've seen it. It's funny. It's like the room type movie, but right. it's meant to be a horror. And the memorable scene is he's in love with a woman, so he gets his erectile dysfunction fixed by having a six inch needle Mm. shoved down the length of his penis and injected in as if that is how they do that. Right. Like it's not done by a torturer. He goes to the doctor and the doctor does that. (laughs) Like I don't, even if this was made before there was ED medication, how did you presuppose that's going to be it? Right. Like a needle to the dick down the hole. <laughs> One of my favorite, and I think oh, it's... Oh, I'm sorry, listeners. I think there's a... I referenced it earlier in this uh, episode, the happiness of the kata, ca- catacuries. catacuries. I love it because there's, if you haven't seen it, there's like a, one of my favorite like sequences in a movie is like there's like six, seven minute animation mm. just seemingly apropos of right. nothing in terms of why it's animation but it's absolutely brilliant it shows the life cycle of like the zombie plague or what like how zombieism happens and it follows like uh so here's a, a little bird that explains it that That's like, really eats yeah. a little tendon takes it back yeah. it's like and now you know that and the movie can move on a yeah. worm <laughs> you know like it, and it just like shows it and then i think it ends with like a bird like shits on a sandwich <laughs> and like yeah. now the guy has is a zombie yeah. later it's just like well, he's also making love to a zombie. That's why he wasn't eating the sandwich. Right. Yeah. It's right. Multiple vectors. Multiple <laughs> vectors. I just love that. There's a lot of ingenuity and strange, but interesting things being yeah. done with the genre that aren't in America. Then that's the, that's the real shame is this genre kind of 
begs for that. Like you can be so creative. I love the genre. It's such an extreme it's, it's, genre. It misses so often. Yeah. Very frequently. And that's yeah. what really bums me out. Like this, yeah, Cabin in the Woods was like very refreshing because this was among the the time where we had the paranormal activities where it's yeah. like it really bums me out that horror can be done. It's like that the one genre that people can do the laziest. Yeah. 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 And yeah, it's the the I genre that's deserving of the most effort. I don't by paranormal activity. I literally couldn't. I can't watch it and not be like, yeah, it's people holding a hand handy cam at someone's house over the weekend. Like, it looks like that to me. Yeah. I don't see how it's scary. I can't suspend my disbelief at I, all. I will say a movie that um, made me sort of understand it because it's a found footage the slash documentary done really well was um lake mungo have you guys oh, seen that no but i thought you were gonna say willow creek have no. you seen that oh i love we willow creek. Watch yeah it, that's the bigfoot one willow, right? yeah yeah that bobcat, uh, bobcat. bobcat. Yeah. Goldway, that was the first found footage movie where i was like this redeems the genre yeah. of found footage movies you can do stuff that's good with it lake mungo is like that where like i you know it's that thing where like you have to get past the idea they're trying to make something look real but when you know it's not real then that aspect of it like oh this is it's real it bar. just goes away or like, like you really have to make it look real yeah. for me to agree yeah. yeah like the first time i saw blair witch project i loved it because i wasn't sure if it was real or not like i yes. hadn't been told that it was fake and then watching it when i realized it's fake it's like okay well this is just shitty my um, dad did the perfect thing which was tell us that he stumbled upon this weird website and just showed us the That's viral perfect. website oh, and terrible. then took us to see Blair Witch when it was only showing at one tiny theater and lied to us on the drive telling us like, yeah, they just found the footage and they're only running it at this one <laughs> that's theater cool, and it's real and we oh, thought it was God. real. Yeah. That's cool. And so that's the thing, like paranormal activity, you know it's not real so it's boring because it's just, right. it gives a shit. If it was <laughs> real, it'd be amazing If it's to not watch. real, this is a static shot where at the end a door is opened by a stagehand exactly. from the other side. What the um, fuck am I watching? <laughs> but I would say like Lake Mungo is the perfect uh, uh, marriage of it all of it being like it's sort of slow, but it's not reliant on jump scares or shit running around. There's yeah, actually no none of that, and it, you just leave the movie feeling kind of disturbed and creepy. Willow Creek it's, is I think that might be how found footage movies work. Yeah, because Willow Creek's the same. You're gonna think it's so boring and slow, not that it's not interesting, but you're like the scares aren't happening at the rate that a paranormal you know would yeah. spend out the scares and the slow build creates such a feeling of reality and naturalness that when the last 30 minutes is just a single 30 minute sequence, that's batshit horrifying. Yeah. You're so fucking invested and so scared. Yeah. Part of that's because he shot it like a real Bigfoot documentary. Like a lot of right. the people in it, you think they're just being interviewed for a documentary. The people who are Bigfoot experts were told yeah. that they're just being interviewed for a real Bigfoot documentary. Only the two actors who end up getting killed by a Bigfoot knew that they were playing make believe. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so that's that. <laughs> I think we're wrapped up here. We love horror, though, obviously, so we'll probably dip into it more. Yeah, we should do more. I want to cover Fest and really bum everyone out. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Shit well, like uh, where can we find you on the the interwebs? On the internet? Um, I'm on Twitter under uh, Movie Hooligan. I'm also uh, me and uh, Tom Ryman, who you might know from like the Crack Movie Club and stuff. Um, we, we have a Twitch channel called uh, Gamefully Unemployed so check yep. that with shit out with an underscore in between yes with an underscore in between which is the Twitter such is a Gamefully good un- Gamefully Unemployed Gamefully un- yeah. I'm so angry at you because that handle is it's so great. good <laughs> Uh, and um, we're we will like, be auto hosting you on one upsmanship's Twitch yeah. stream as soon as we can figure out how to do that. Yes. Yeah. Oh, we, we already do. Oh, yeah, we already yeah. do. Yeah. All right. So we'll be doing the same. To we're you. official sister streams. I yeah, would say. yeah. Yeah. We're like a community of streamers. So you'll yeah. hear a lot of the same people popping over yeah. both. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. if you like video games, check us both out. And or tabletop. Like board and games. We, we yeah, pl- we've be been playing, playing uh, f- Friday the 13th as well. So yes. horror fans, come have us. Come watch us uh, kill each other and kill teenagers uh, in like that video that game. game. Well, it's I'm scary. sorry. End of episode. 
This has been a Small Beans Endeavor. We're a bunch of pals who make podcasts, sketches, music, web series, and movies. The Beans always have new ideas percolating, so make sure to check us out at patreon.com slash smallbeans. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com forward slash smallbeans, where you can browse all of our current and past content, see what we've got planned in the future, and learn how your support can help the Small Beans grow into huge, giant monster beans. If you enjoyed this content module, please like, rate, subscribe, or tell a friend about us. We love you!